Well, our scripture today comes from Acts chapter 1. Hear these words from the book of Acts, starting in verse 6. Then they, the disciples, gathered around him, Jesus, and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After Jesus said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They, the disciples, were looking intently up to the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, church, today uh, is the day of, uh, it's the Sunday after the day of Ascension. So I'm going to ask you, feel free to type any uh, responses or comments to the sermon in the uh, comments. Um, now, last week we completed our uh, five-week series on 1 Peter. And next week is the Sunday we celebrate the day of Pentecost. And we slowly begin coming back together for in-person worship. Now, before we move into the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, we have to take time to study and to talk about the ascension of Jesus Christ. Now, you have heard Jesus ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God. We profess that in our Apostles' Creed. But this is something we don't normally talk about much for whatever reason. And it really is a shame because this is something that we should celebrate, honor, and take time to study and to meditate on each and every year. Now, here's something to note before we get started today. Luke is the author, and, and um, he's the only Gentile, non-Jewish background or uh, author who converted he converted to christianity uh, from the greek and he in the new Testament, he's the only jewish greek author in the new testament and he is said to have written both the gospel of luke and the book of acts and the book gospel of luke was to tell the story of jesus and it starts this way many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us just as they were handed down to those who were the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word with this in mind, since I myself have carefully, fully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. That's Luke 1, 1 to 4. Now the book of Acts tells the story of the spread of the gospel after Jesus had ascended. And it begins this way. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all, the, all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. That's Acts 1, verses 1 and 2. Now, today we need to focus on why Jesus had to ascend and what that means for us today. This past Thursday was the actual day that we celebrate the ascension of Jesus, which is 40 days after he resurrected on Easter. One of the posts that I saw on uh, Facebook this past week was, was really a cute way to understand the ascension. And it said, the ascension is the day that Jesus started to work from home. Now, we've all seen images paintings, cartoons, movies, books, etc., on what people today think it looked like for Jesus to ascend. And to ascend does mean to go up. But is this what Jesus did? Did he just float into the air and disappear into the sky? What's interesting is this may not be what the scripture says. Yet this is the image we think about when Jesus ascended, toes right below the crowd, clouds. And scripture, in fact, says he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. 
Now, remember, Jesus and his disciples were gathered around the mountains. And Luke 24 said that Jesus was leading them out to the vicinity of Bethany. Now, the phrase taken up is used both in Luke 24 and Acts 1. It could mean that Jesus was taken up the mountain by the Spirit. So what does this mean? First of all, we have to remember that the ancient writers did not have the same vocabulary and language nuances that we have today. And scripture is filled with the best language and metaphors and allegories that they, under, that, that they had based upon their understanding. Now, the Jewish belief in how the world operated was in three different levels. There was a level called Sheol, which is the bottom level, which is what we tend to incorrectly call hell. There was the earth where we are now, the second level, and there's the heavens where God is enthroned. Scripture says God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. Also, it says heaven is God's throne and the earth is his footstool. See, all of this is to show that heaven is greater than earth. It is a higher level. We ascend to heaven just like they ascended the, uh, to go to Jerusalem. So when Jesus ascended into heaven, as the Apostles' Creed says that we profess in 1 Peter and throughout Scripture, it says that he has moved to a higher level. Now we have to remember that heaven is not some other place. It is here with us. In fact, remember in Mark 1, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Anglican bishop and author and biblical scholar N.T. Wright points out that in his book, Surprised by Hope, he points out that in biblical cosmology, heaven and earth are not two locations with the same spatial continuum. Rather, they are dimensions of God's creation. And Jesus has entered into the heavenly realm, the heavenly dimension, and he's no longer bound by time and space. He is in the realm of heavens, of heaven. Steve Seaman, Asbury Seminary professor and author, says, Heaven is that place that is totally pervaded by God's glory. And since heaven is among us here and now, we get to taste the glory of heaven here and now. And when Jesus entered into the heavenly realm, he sat down at the right hand of God. Mark 16 says that. That's where we get that from. And this is a metaphor to say that Jesus has taken the seat of power. Scholar Thomas Oden says to sit at the right hand of God means to participate fully in God's majesty imparted through the exaltation. And Christ governs in the kingdom of power, grace, and glory, reigns eternally, and has dominion over all things. In other words, Jesus is King of kings and he's Lord of lords. He is on the throne. This is important to note because if Jesus is not on the throne, then someone or something else will take his place. Think about your life. So what does all of this mean for us today? Wouldn't the world be better if Jesus had just remained here on earth physically as a human so we can see him in person and be face to face with him? Glad you asked that question. Remember Jesus' parting words to his disciples out of John 16. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your own good that I go away. Unless I go away, the advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And this brings us to the final words of Jesus to his disciples in Acts 1 before he ascended. And he tells his disciples they are not to leave Jerusalem, but they are to wait for the gifts his father has promised. They will be baptized by the promised Holy Spirit that Jesus has talked about. Jesus tells his disciples, his followers, that they should not do anything until they have been given the power, presence, and authority from heaven to go to work. See, without the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can really do nothing of heavenly value. I know, I know many people think they're doing the greater good by doing things for Christ. But that's not what we're supposed to do. That's not what this means. We are to work with 
Christ. And catch this. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives means that Christ is with us always. This is why he entered into the heavenly realm so he can send his spirit to be with all of his people. And since Christ is in the heavenly realm, he is also everywhere all at once at the same time time. What's more, the Apostle Paul says that not only has Christ been exalted and seated at God's right hand, but because we are in Christ, he says that we are with Christ in the heavenly realm too. At the same time, we're on the realm of earth. See, humanity is able to enter into the heavenly realm because Christ, as a human, entered and has secured a place at God the Father's right hand. Those who are Christ's are at the same time in heaven and on earth. This is why, this is why we take, we share, and we show the kingdom of heaven with us wherever we go. This is also why it is important not to bring any trash, any negativity, any gossip, hate, anger, adultery, perversion, sin of any kind with us because that is not who we are in Christ. Instead, we are Christ's royal ambassadors. We are the royal images of God in this world and we should do nothing that tarnishes that image within us in the eyes of those watching us. For us to live this kind of life, we have to have our minds on heaven, not because this is, where going, this is where we're going to be one day, but because we are in the heavenly realm at the same time we're on earth because we belong to Jesus Christ. When Jesus ascended, the angels, the messengers of God, told the disciples not to keep staring into the sky because Jesus will be returning. But see, until Christ returns, we get to be his hands and feet and do his work in the world. We get to be empowered by the Holy Spirit that was promised to us, that was given to us. And next week, we're gonna begin a series to help us live a greater life, greater than we can ever have imagined and, and learn what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit as we seek to desire more with our life. Now may we always seek to live greater, live with the reality that we have one foot into the heavenly realm as well as on earth. May we live into the reality that Christ is with us always. Let's pray. Almighty God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, raised him to the heavenly realm to be with you. Raise us to a higher way of life so we know and show heaven with us wherever we go. Guide us and fill us with your presence each and every day, O oh God. May we all encounter and know that we are yours simply by the way the people see us, by the way we live our life, and may our words be a reflection of our minds focused on heaven that is all around us and in us. Lord Jesus Christ, you are on the throne. You were seated at the Father's right hand. I pray those listening and praying here and now let you take the throne in their heart so you can guide your people to life everlasting as well as bring your life and kingdom wherever we all go. And all those in agreement with this prayer said, Amen. Now, if you have never said yes to Jesus Christ by answering his call on your life, now is the time. I pray that you get to live into the joy that Christ brings. If you said yes to Christ's call, let us know and we can help you live your response out. If you said yes again, rededicated, recommitted your life to Christ, let us know and we can help equip you for God's purposes in life.